So why do you have beef with Mel Brooks's son's masterpiece? Well, okay, I like the book, World War Z. I know it, it's a very well-made book. Um, I liked his zombie survival guide. It, you know, it's all very early 2000s when the zombie craze is like a whole thing. Uh, the, the voice cast, very well done. Uh, you know, it's like the, the audiobook I got done listening to. I'd read it before. I read it in like 2010. I just finally listened to the audiobook. I just, I think it's kind of contrived to make... Basically, reading it now in 2023, it is very much a snapshot of the politics of 2006. It's like kind of funny because it's, you know, like China is no longer like backwards nowadays. But back then, it's like they were just barely industrializing and stuff. You know, they didn't even host the Olympics yet like they did in 2008, a few years later. Uh, Russia's very, it's very stereotypical, like, oh, the Soviet, you know, oh, waves, you know, that we kind of have a different picture of nowadays with the Ukraine war and you know, the three day special military operation that we're in day 574 <laughs> of. It's just interesting. I, I just think basically, I the, the bit that pisses me off about it, not pisses me off, maybe that's too strong. The bit that annoys me about it is kind of he needed it, the problem that the zombie movies and books and stuff always have to have is step one, you have to actually have the zombies beat the military. You know, mm-hmm. like it doesn't work if they can't beat the military because then the military just clears them. Like they just die. And how they do it in the book is and these are just like slow walking zombies. Right. In the book, they're not like they're not running. They're not like left for dead where they're like special infected or whatever. Basically, what they do in the book, though, is they're just like here. We're setting up in Yonkers, New York. We're shooting all the ones that came out of Manhattan and then. Because they're zombies and you have to hit them in the head, they don't die, and then the military loses. And it's just like, bro, like if I shoot you, if I, if I shoot you with like a a machine gun, but they're zombies. But but like, okay, I don't hit you in the head, so you don't die. But I obliterate your torso. You're you're not gonna be a threat. Like I don't care if you're like undead and oh they just keep coming. It's like. <laughs> I okay. I have obliterated your spine with a tank round. Um, you're not dead. You're just a head on the ground. But and it's just like they're like, yeah, the the machine guns just didn't work because you had to hit them in the head, and we needed more accuracy. And it's like, why do you have to hit them in the head? Just just shoot them. Like like I I, I get the argument the author was trying to make, but it always just is annoying because it's like World War One. You know, you just set up in a straight line with machine guns and an enemy that's slowly moving towards you. And guess what? You just fucking turn them into red mist. Like, it's not that hard. You just shoot them. <laughs> because guess what? Bullets don't just, like, puncture you like a needle. They kind of make holes and explode what they hit. Especially if I'm shooting you with, like, a 50 cal that's on a tank, you know, like a 50 cal machine gun. You just shoot them. Like, like, it's not that hard. But but the author's trying to do this, like, oh, the thermobaric weapons don't work because they're not, like, regular humans. But it's like, just just hit them with napalm. Like, it's not that hard. You know, I just read a book also. I've been going hard with the audiobooks this week about the bombing campaign in um, World War II. Uh, the Bomber Mafia by Malcolm Gladwell. It's pretty good, too. Uh, and they just basically, for a little bit, describe both the invention of napalm and what it does... And, you know, they're kind of, like, illustrating, like, forward to Vietnam. But it's like, okay, if you're fighting a force of beings that are not human and they're dead and they kill you immediately and also their blood and guts and shit, uh, like, infects you. So, you know, you want to just napalm them. Like, seriously, just 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 shoot them with napalm. It sticks to them. It melts. I don't care if, like, oh, you got, you got to shoot the head, though. It's like, but if they don't have any, like, muscle or, like, matter left, they're not really a threat. You can also use, like, chemical weapons on... I don't think Mel... Yeah, Max Brooks thought about, like, oh, yeah, you can use chemical weapons on uh, on zombies. Like, that's not a war crime. They're already dead. Because he was just, like... He, he made that point in the book where it's like, oh, yeah, VF, VX gas. They don't need to breathe. But it's like, okay, but white phosphorus melts skin. Uh, and, and they're just skin. Like, like you can just, like, melt them alive. I mean, they're not alive. They're dead. It's not a war crime if they're already dead. Like, you can just go, ha- like, ham with that. 
I, I don't know. The movie was even dumber, but it's just like I, I basically it's just like the suspension of disbelief fails when you try to actually like explicitly demonstrate the military losing because it's just like it, it, I just can't suspend my disbelief from that. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Cleo Talk. I told you I was going to go off. I told you. I've, I've been thinking about this for 10 years, dude. When I first read it, it's like this is kind of dumb. <laughs> and when I read it again. It's like. The rest of the book is really good, but just them going into they should have left it ambiguous as to how we lost. You know, it's like, oh yeah, the military. Blah, blah. That's but like the Walking Dead. They mm. never show you the military losing. They just lost, and it's like, okay, cool. That's I can suspend my disbelief for that. My name is Matt, and I'm RC, and uh, we're talking about zombies. Honestly, you got me going. I the zombie like thing. Like, I've never liked any of the zombie stories. The Zombie Survival Guide was a book. Like, I remember going to the Borders bookstore down the street from my house and always looking at that book. I have it. Yeah, my parents would never buy it for me because they thought it was stupid. It's fun. I mean, the, the Survival Guide, it's, it's just fun. It's kind of mm. like a, ooh. And then he came out with the book a couple of years later, World War Z, and it's like, oh, it's kind of fun. And the, the book is cool, like World War Z. Like, if, you, if HBO was still around... Uh, they could make a pretty good mini series out of it that isn't the movie because it's, it's kind of cool, a bunch of different stories and stuff. HBO is around; they just don't make cool stuff anymore. They canceled Winning Time. It's like the best show I've seen in like four years. It just got season two. It's really good. They canceled it for no reason. Oh, you, you know what else about HBO? Band of Brothers is on Netflix now. Mm-hmm. But why is why That's would what I'm talking about. why would you let like one of your prestige mini series that like rocketed you into like? The hence, stratosphere. Hence why I said they're not around. Because they're owned by some guy now who's basically, his job is now just to tank the company. It's bizarre. We keep letting these like venture capitalist vultures get ownership of companies that then their job is just to drive them into the ground to like, make a tiny bit of profit. Because, oh, well, technically we spent less money because we fired everyone, so our payroll was zero for one quarter, so that's 25% growth. Isn't that how Instapot died? Yes, it's exactly how Instapot died. It's just like what what, what could have been just like a household like foodwares brand that makes like millions of dollars. Instead, venture capitalists should have been, we're going to make this a billion dollar company out of air fryers and rice cookers. Instapot, Twitter, Unity, we got like tons of examples now. It's just like... Like you're you're not allowed to be a company and just make a profit reliably. You're you're not allowed to do that anymore. You have to have like twenty percent. Basically, it's just like your company now, by definition, legally has to be unsustainable, or else you're going to get sued by your shareholders. What's so stupid? Well, why can't we just have like an understanding that like growth does not have to like compound year after year, and no. also you can have bad years, and that's totally fine as long as you like have plans to keep all your employees employed. Well, it, it's like I like four hundred one ks, right? Like yeah. you want that to grow every year, but it's just like okay, slow, consistent growth, because that's what's important. It doesn't matter if your four hundred one k goes up a hundred percent in one year. It doesn't matter because you're in it for the long run, right? Yeah. So you just want slow one percent every single year. That's fine. I'm retiring in fifty years. It'll be up however much, right? I know that's not like accounting for inflation and stuff, but point being is. Slow, consistent growth is the actual winner because that's how your company's around for a hundred years. You know, mm-hmm. is just we're just gonna do what we do. We're not gonna do anything too radical. But nowadays, it's like the corporate world is just infected with that virus of yeah, we have to have massive returns because that's the only. Even though it kills the company in five years, because like Instant Pot, we're gonna do all this stupid shit and drive the company bankrupt, and all these people are out of jobs. It's so dumb. It's so dumb. <sighs> It's hearkening back to our last episode, Middle Class Rebellion. Yeah. I, by the way, I'm going to do this live on air. I feel like we need to change our logo from the uh, statue. I feel like I feel like people get the wrong idea. Should we uh, like maybe reach out and get like a like a commission like logo that kind of has a statue, but it's more cartoony? So it seems like we're more of a like not statue Twitter. That's what I'm kind of thinking is because I'm kind of thinking a lot of people see us on Twitter or our podcast and just kind of assume that we're one of those guys. And it's kind of like a we're not first impression. Yeah. I mean, people listening currently uh, who have listened for a while know that we're not. Um, but if this is your first episode, hello and welcome. I'm sorry for the, I'm sorry four, for the four, four minute <laughs> cold open about zombies. Look, they're coming back. Okay. It's fun. Also, oh. Also, I was just gonna say, with the pandemic, it's it's more topical than ever, you know. Yeah, 
If only the pandemic happened in 2006, then World War Z and... Well, okay, so funnily enough, we did have the original SARS virus around like 2006, 2005 ish. Mm-hmm. And so he based, you know, that was from China and stuff, just mm-hmm. like the new one was. So he actually based the Chinese like SARS thing. That's what he based his zombie virus around. So it's basically both the construction of Three Gorges Dam and then that, that, that that's how he kind of structured it. But it is a little bit fun after we had, you know covid to be like oh yeah there's this virus. and it's st- and it's still here yeah it's actually getting worse in 2023 right now is it getting worse yeah i've been seeing uh, there's been like boosts in um uh covid uh like test rates and joe biden just recently i think today uh cut a bunch of money so they can go back to sit mailing free tests again i saw that which and, that's good i don't know why they ever stopped that and i'm not sure if you've been to a cvs or walgreens but if you want to get cold medicine it is cleared out Hmm. so uh if you haven't yet get your flu shot and covid19 booster i haven't yet yeah i (laughs) did you just say i haven't yet either i am getting it friday because i want the day because every single time i have a horrific reaction to the booster actually all the covid shots i'm out of commission for like a day so i'm gonna light a saturday on fire for my own safety can i be honest with you yeah I got the original COVID vaccine. I got it early because I was like a special employee because I worked at a grocery store. Yeah. And then I just kind of was lazy and I, I never got a booster. You haven't gotten boosters? <laughs> Ever. No. What I, the- I got COVID like once last year and it was like the <laughs> sickest I have ever been except for the time I was died of pneumonia. Uh, and I just, I'm just kind of lazy. <laughs> I, I haven't done it yet. I know I need to. Dude, dude, you don't even have any boosters? and you, you, no. you, you were so sick. I know. <laughs> it, it, it would have been easier if you had the boosters. I know. I, I realized that once I got it, it's like I probably should have gotten boosted at some point. But I just kind of, well, I was working at the grocery store and it's like, you know, they give you the one time they get the actual vaccine and then they just kind of never did that again. And it's like, well, I don't really have time. Well, I mean, and then I moved and then it's like, well, and now it's a whole thing. It It's still free. And I have like, I've been getting the boosters basically whenever like the uh, hypochondriac around me that I uh, uh, keep in contact with uh, says he's getting his boosters. So whenever he's saying he's getting it, I'm going to go and get mine. But every single time I get it, I have a horrific reaction where I'm just like, I feel like I have COVID for one day and then I'm fine afterwards. See, that's the thing is I'm not a hypochondriac and I get sick once per year, but I get like really, really, really sick. I, I just, I don't get sick, but when I do, I go hard <laughs> Like I'll have like a hundred and ten degree fever or something like that. <laughs> uh, so that's where it's just like I just don't think about it because I don't really ever get sick. Either my immune system's really good or it's really bad, and I'm just lucky. I, I can't tell. But yeah. man, I remember when I uh, got my first COVID shot. Like I was looking around. I was still in the uh, in the college town that I was going to school in, and uh, stuff around that that town and then where my parents lived there was basically no ability to get a shot but there is a rural town in kansas that you know of well called pleasanton kansas yes who after me calling around i called the kansas like health department clinic down there and just like yes please come down they're about to expire no one wants them oh so i drove down to pleasanton kansas to get my covid shots and I was waiting to get my second one. I remember distinctly, I was sitting there, mask on, in the uh, in the clinic. And this late lady waddles in. The receptionist looks up and goes, Deborah, you can't be in here. You have COVID. And she's just like, I want to talk to them. And she's like, we'll come out to your car. You cannot be in here. You have COVID. And I'm just like, what in the actual <laughs> fuck is going on Dude, here? Small towns are great. <laughs> See, I, I, I got a docs myself I, I got in wichita when i was living there but it was wild because i i think i think we all forget or at least i forget or i don't think about it that much or i was just depressed and like it was a weird time in 2020 but it was just like i was like in a movie you know yeah. it was like actually like the streets were just shut down there was nobody on the roads i go to the like vaccination site which was the old library which was abandoned but then they just turned it into a vaccination center so it's this massive concrete like brutalist building that you just walk into and there's just like 400 people i saw like 
I was walking in behind some like, I, I don't know the reli- like Buddhists, the the robes and stuff. Yeah, yeah. There's like five of those guys there. It's just like wow, this is kind of weird. It's like a segment of all the people who are either elder because it was like you know in like February of 2020, 2021, I think. Yeah. So it was like me, the guy who works at a road. You know, like how the fuck am I an essential employee? And then it was like all the elderly and like, I guess immunosuppressant or whatever I, I don't know whatever groups were getting it early I remember, remember when it was like first going down and I actually realized it was going down I uh, I went to Walmart and bought like I think I drained the majority of my bank account buying enough food stocks to where I didn't leave and I didn't leave for like a month and a half during the lockdown thing and uh, the, I will admit that I uh, may or may not have been uh on a drug that gives you the munchies and I went to McDonald's once like a month and a half in and I have felt absolutely atrocious going through the McDonald's drive through like I am a piece of shit we're in a global pandemic See, okay. but little, little did I know that no one was paying attention people just stopped after two weeks and just kept on doing stuff I just didn't realize because I was may or may not have been uh, just really high the we, entire time your your college kicked you out right because you had like spring break and then you came back and then they kicked you out right well i, I was in a like a private apartment that i rented but yeah oh, no we, we were yeah. like it was i had friends who were uh, still on campus and they basically said uh you have 24 hours here's trash bags get your shit out you're not allowed back in yeah that's what they did to us basically um but i had the so i i, I drove back home and then i had to come back four days later and just we had to carry me and my uh, now fiance had to carry everything out in our cars in one trip so we just shoved everything out there in like one car it was wild but uh i stopped going to online class because i hated the online classes and all my teachers were like i don't know how to grade online without any tests so y'all get an a <laughs> yeah. I, I had one two months before in like February of 2020 you know like we all shut down like March or whatever but in like February it was my logic professor and he was like well you know I'm not sure if this thing's real or not but honestly if we actually have to like go to like online class or like something weird happens I'm just canceling class you all get an A I, I don't want to deal with it and he was saying that jokingly <laughs> and then it comes around and he's like well I gotta stick to my word because I actually don't know how to do the online classes so you all get an A yeah I had already like taken some online classes uh, pre like COVID, and when online classes first started happening, I'm just like, wow, I already have online class experience because basically they were like these uh, classes that the professor basically just recorded their lectures on a PowerPoint and he just watched it and then like did like assignments on Blackboard and then submitted a paper for the midterm and the final. It was basically just like a yeah, this person, it, it, this is just it. Like you like do just a sign through blackboard you watch the video and whatever i thought this is exactly what it's going to be and then zoom happened and uh when people i had one professor who was trying to still continue like the participatory thing where you're just like all right can someone like speak up during the zoom class and it's just like yeah, no nobody no i i am well, it, it's april of 2020 i am zoinked yeah, uh, just, you are not getting me to answer a question it, I, I did find that funny when they were just right in the middle of the Zoom thing, right? When it first started, they were trying to do the classes like normal, not realizing it's like, dude, nobody is here for this. Yeah. Like, because to be honest, me and my dad just kind of for like two or three months solid, you know, those margarita buckets you can buy? Yeah. We were going through about one of those a week. Dude. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> so we're all just from home and it's like, well, what, what are we even supposed to do? We're not supposed to go anywhere. So I just get up, you know, in my jammies or just... I wouldn't get dressed because it's like, well, why am I getting dressed? I'm going outside and just be crushing margaritas. It, 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 it was you and your dad in pajamas just crushing margaritas? Yes. We Th- went through that, about five of those buckets in about a month and a half. It was great. That rocks. <laughs> yeah. It was just, we were getting really good tequila, too, because it's like, well, the liquor store is still open. That's essential. Yeah. Uh, speaking of uh, uh, of liquor stores, uh, I remember uh, talking to my dad because he still had to continue working through that, um, and he's a, like he's a traveling salesman. And uh, so, but he is still kind of nostalgic about the, like, being able to just drive on the highway and there was no one on you. He's just like, yeah, I could just, like, go, like, 120 and no one's going to stop me. And it's yeah. just completely empty. Oh, and it was great. It was great. Did you ever go just driving? No. No, yeah. I, like, literally, I bought the groceries at Walmart, basically blew my entire bank account, and then hunkered down and just was, like, like, 
I'm not going to lie. You missed out by not driving during that period. You know how like a 9-11 where everyone was talking about afterwards? Yeah. And, you know, like so quiet. It's like that, but like, have you ever wanted to drive down like Main Street in Kansas City with no cars anywhere, not not even parked on the side, just completely dead? Or like anywhere, I-35, just no cars anywhere? Not see a single person? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, 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 that's what it was. It was just like legitimately, you could, like that cannonball run thing where they're driving across the country where that guy did it during the pandemic. And it's yeah. like that record is never going to be broken because there was nobody on the road. Yeah. And you didn't have to do any of the normal stuff. I, I think about that. And I also think about, um, we went to Olive Garden. You know, like you were talking, it was like a month later and yeah. it kind of started to open up. And Olive Garden was like, Hey, you know, we want to like make money. Can you can come and they they had the whole thing. They spray painted the parking lot so that like here we have like forty spaces. You call ahead, you park in the space. Like you you park in nineteen. Yeah, you go there, and we're there. We're getting in the line to get to the space, and they're like, okay, so we got we got a bunch of wine that uh, nobody's here. Uh, do you want wine? It was. You know, like they're really nice. It's Olive Garden, but it yeah. was pretty good wine. It was ten dollars a bottle, <laughs> <laughs> so we bought like three of them. Because it's like, you know what? Actually, I will take like your really cheap. You know, because they got like the big vault of wine, but it's yeah. like, well, nobody's in the restaurant. We're not allowed to sell this like open to go. Nobody's taking glasses of wine. So do you want to just buy a bottle? Because we got like a ton of bottles of wine that are just sitting around. That was great. Yeah, I it. All I, of mine are just alcohol related, but I, I mean, didn't have access to drugs. So. Yeah, I mean, all of mine was just hanging out uh, with my uh, roommates and just like watching a lot of just like King of the Hill uh, being may or may not inebriated on um, a drug that's legal in Missouri. Yeah, LSD. Yeah, yeah, LSD. No, but I. Uh... Turning on my Zoom class, turning the, the the like sounding camera off, and just watching like YouTube on my phone in the middle of the lecture, and yes. no one's gonna tell me to turn it like just to participate. Dude, legitimately, I okay. I have my main desktop, and then I had the laptop that I did Zoom on. I would have my Zoom laptop right here next to my desk, and I would have Hearts of Iron Four on my main <laughs> monitor because <laughs> it's like. I would just be like, yeah, I'm looking at the screen, but I would actually be looking past it at Heart of Iron 4 <laughs> because it's like, well, who cares? Like, I, I wasn't mean, even sure if we were all going to die or not. So it's like, well, I, I, like, I want to get my education. I want to pass classes. But like, because yeah. it's like, you know, then you got like the Delta. You got all these like new variants coming out. And it's like, well, it's just getting worse, apparently. This is great. And and then basically for this entire year of 2023, up until basically now, we're just kind of like, yeah, it, it, it it's not a thing anymore. Just like uh, it's endemic now. It, it, yeah, I mean, I just I think about because I got really back in the nine eleven a few months ago, and I just, <laughs> you got really big into nine eleven. Yeah, every time I go on a flight, I get like really into reading books or like watching documentaries about nine eleven. I don't know why, <laughs> but uh, I was reading one, and it was kind of a uh, uh, you know an oral history type thing where they just do interviews with people, and then it's basically just people telling their stories, and that's just yeah. the whole history. It's actually a really good book. Uh, the audio book again is pretty good. They got like a full cast, but um, I was just thinking about that, and I was thinking about like COVID, and it's like you know we could, like that's kind of that's what we're people, doing on this podcast yeah, right now. I, I was thinking about that exactly right now as we're talking about it. It's like yeah, that's kind of what we're doing, and also it's like yeah, a lot of it, everyone kind of did it like experienced it differently, and we we don't have that like we'll never have that again. That kind of one month, two month period where everybody was just kind of like okay. Where like, this is legit, and the the weirdest thing is like you talk to other people and they're just if they were in like the working world and they like either like they got laid off and like it was one of like the worst like financial times of their life, mm -hmm. or like kids who are like were in elementary school and basically like are now like emotionally and educationally stunted, mm -hmm. whereas we were just like in the later years of college, so we just gotta like just fuck around and chill. Yeah, we got to fuck around and chill and I got shit out into one of the worst job markets uh, in the past 40 years, probably. Yeah. It's or, like, at least in 2008, there wasn't uh, also a virus that shut down businesses. It was just like an economic crisis. Or you could just be like an essential worker who was just like, yeah, I still have to like do my job. 
Well, remember, I had a. I was working at a grocery store for the latter half because I was still in college. Me and my, we, we got an apartment and stuff, you know. Mm. So uh, I got that whole thing for like about five months where they required masks. And I was working like behind the plexiglass and doing all that stuff. And then I started working in the garage, uh, not the garage, the gas station where I'm just in a concrete box with the plexiglass and dome. So it's like, oh, okay, cool. I'm just working a normal job now. Like I don't need a mask because... There's like a bulletproof window in between me and everybody else. So, uh, uh, now that was weird. It was weird, and it's like you can't really talk about it because it's political now. You know, the whole COVID thing. It's like it was a legitimate thing that happened, but now it's politics, so you can't talk about it. Like YouTube flags it. Like half the country's convinced it wasn't actually real. Yeah. I mean, half the country's convinced that John Fetterman is apparently a series of clones. <laughs> did Did you see the fake Craigslist post that was circulating around Twitter slash X? No, I, I saw the uh, Star Wars meme of Obi-Wan walking through the, through the cloning facility being like, well, we wanted to clone a Jedi, but Sypha Dios was uh, insistent we clone this guy from Philadelphia, 6'8". Uh, the, the Craigslist post was just like, actors wanted, DC area. We need people who are like 6'8 and look like a white Shrek, uh, not for any reason. You need to be able to at least know something about politics. We live in, I, I don't think uniquely stupid times, but I don't love it. <laughs> like, our parents' cultural events were just, like, minor political scandals. Uh, our cultural events is a former president got arrested and half the country thinks that, a, like, a real fucking virus that happened isn't actually real. You know, I was I was reading, speaking of, like, our parents' cultural events, I was reading about, like, Mount St. Helens. Yeah, because I just find that fascinating. Because that's like something I know happened. You know, it's like, oh yeah, Mount St. Helens. But it's like you read back up on it, and it's like, you know, they knew it was gonna blow for like two months. Yeah, like they were kind of getting seismic. So it was just kind of like the event of the '80s, like like 1980. I mean, where like, oh yeah, Mount St. Helens is gonna erupt at some point. Like we don't know what's gonna happen exactly. And it's you know, case in point sixty people died because there's you know, a bunch of researchers there, like that one famous photographer that was there yeah. who died in it. There was a volcanologist who's like taking samples and stuff and died. Who he, he actually wasn't on the volcano. He was like six miles away at a like watch station and was killed like almost instantly. And it's just like I think about that and then I think about now where it's like it feels like we went from and I'm not like doing the return or whatever for major political events, but it does feel like our political events were like assassination attempts and stuff. And now it's just like, look, let's murder a million Americans by like just well, pretending the virus isn't real that. And then it's like, well, Jimmy on Twitter doesn't think that, uh, like this politician is actually a real being. He thinks he's an alien. It's like these guys that like, it used to be like national Enquirer, like fucking tabloid stuff that is now like national news and actually like, well, Jim, what do you think? Like, you know, chairman of the joint chiefs of staff. And it's just like the stupidest, like the, I, I think about that, that, that like thing in Mexico where they had like the paper mache doll and they're like, it's a real extraterrestrial. And it's like, why is this news? Like, this is like literally the cover of a national Enquirer story. But this is now on CNN, and we're, we we have like people from like the Pentagon talking as if this is something that's actually like relevant at all. Like, like why is this things that we talk about now? <laughs> why why is this, was it always like this? Because I feel like it wasn't. I feel like this is all just like social media death of print news stuff, where the, or, or just, we, or whatever we, gets clicks. We all have un, undiagnosed brain worms. Yeah. Well, it's just like I, I feel like I, I, half the stories now are just because we have set up a system in which our media and our ways of interacting with each other are incentivizing us to make each other mad and to get people to like angrily respond, you know, because it's like Twitter does that thing now where like impressions will pay people with blue checks and it's like, OK, cool. So Twitter is now it will now pay people to get as many people mad and quote tweeting and dunking on them as possible. Yeah. Like it's now incentivizing the stupidest people on the planet to post the stupidest things you've ever heard. And they're getting paid for it. Like this is healthy. Uh, this is great. <laughs> Man, I just, we're, we're not 
back to the anti-doomer action. We're not being doomer. We're just, this is going down nostalgia lane about COVID-19. And uh, I don't know. It's been a very, it's not doomer. It's just, it's been a very weird couple of weeks. <laughs> why we haven't posted in a couple of weeks. So it's just kind of yeah, one of those things. Well, life is odd. Um, and we also have day jobs. That which, is true. We which, do not make enough money from this podcast to quit our jobs. I, I don't think we've made a single cent off this podcast. No, we have not. No. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, hey, let us know if your week uh, or the past like two or three weeks have been just absolute hell at your place of employment. And if this has made you uh, feel any better about that. Uh, yeah. Because it's been hell for us. Oh, I, I guess I guess we never did the news. No, we've just been lamenting. Yeah, United Auto Workers, the the Kansas City GM plant got shut down, not because of a strike, but because um, GM shut it down. Yeah, we are not actual United Auto Workers. Oh it, God, it, no. it, it just that I'm not cool it, enough to be union. If you didn't connect it, we're just saying the news. We're not actually related to the strikes. Solidarity to the strikes. We. Wait, did, how, did it? Did I say something that sounded like? Well, we the, the way that I like was picking up the conversation about me talking about like work. And oh then yeah, you... yeah, yeah. No, no, we're not complaining about work because of that. We no. work in completely unrelated fields. I just that's something that happened today is the GM plant in North KC got shut down because a different plant went on strike. So GM's like, "Well, we're shutting down the Kansas City one," so they laid off everyone. And it's like, "Wow, oh, this is terrific." And that the Hollywood strikes are still going on. That yellow strike that we were talking about months ago in our Summer of Strikes episode. Yeah. That company just went out of business. That's 5,000 people out of jobs. R- rest in me is yellow trucking, like the third biggest, like less than load trucking company out there. I feel like, and this might be a hot take, I feel like if Biden had simply not capitulated immediately to BNSF, Union Pacific, all the rail companies, if he had actually let the rail workers go on strike for like a week then all these other subsequent strikes from everybody else would have gone a little bit better because you have one of the largest and most important unions in the country, you know, the rail workers who have their own different federal guidelines for strike and go on strike, attempt to get shut down by the federal government, uh, get effectively shafted on their demands, like get pretty much nothing they were asking for, get told, yeah, now it's a federal crime if you go on strike because we have spoken. And now it's like, now you got to be like Hollywood or any of these other major companies that have striking workers. Look at that and be like, oh, well, yeah, okay. Yeah, we can do whatever we want. What, like, I mean, they're, like they're, the, they're not pro-union. The, the right Biden had come out and just struck down BNSF and like, no, fuck you. You're going to do, you know, these guys are either going to strike or you're going to do that. Then that really would have probably affected how the big three look at the UAW, you know? Yeah. And I mean, it, what, the writers have been on strike for what? three or five months now oh my god it, it's it, got to be longer than that it, it, it's been it's been a it's been a painful and i am sure like is solidarity with the writers because like i'm sure that 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 probably hurts if they haven't already all taken like side gig jobs at this point yeah i just i feel like it's kind of one of those well we you know, the narrative around it last year was, well, we can't afford to let the railroad workers go on strike because, you know, obviously they move all this stuff. Mm-hmm. But then the idea is, well, we have to just prevent them from going on strike rather than actually acquiescing to any of their demands, really, or allowing them to go on strike to prove their value and then forcing the railroad companies to come to the table and actually negotiate in good faith and not just operate with the full knowledge that the federal government can't afford to allow them to go on strike because it's a midterm, so we'll just, you know, roll over. Yeah. I, I feel like, you know, it's not the same because they have different guidelines, but it definitely set a precedent that all these other companies are operating under, which is pro-union Joe, you know, Joe Biden or whatever, is not going to come to your rescue because, you know, if he, if he wouldn't help the rail union more, why is he going to... Like, I, I've just been seeing headlines about, like, the UAW and it's like seemed like well Trump outflanked Biden on the United Auto Workers and it's like how the hell is that possible? Like I, I one I don't believe that and two just go to Detroit Biden just just go stand on the picket line just do that that's all you gotta do like that proves that you're actually pro union you know or if you don't even want to go to Detroit you could go to like any of the other striking plants across mm-hmm. the Midwest like because. 
I mean, if you want to go, like, if there's one in, like, a, if there's a plant in Ohio, that's a swing state. I mean. I mean, and you know how much that would love, you know, maybe it's not, like, good with, like, the Washington elite or whatever, where they're lobbyists or, you know, from the Ford Motor Company or whatever. But, like, you know how many blue-collar people are going to look at that who are union themselves, like, postal workers or any number of people, sanitation workers or whatever, who are going to look well, at that and be like, well, here's a guy standing up for the UAW well, in a solidarity. There you go. That makes me feel better because if I were to go on strike, instead of it being like the rail strike that they shut down, now I feel better about my job and myself. You know? Well, technically, I think the uh, Postal Workers Union are unionized basically against the president. Yeah. They're still voters. They are still voters. Yeah. Anyway, all right. Do you, do you think that's it? That's enough? I, I can just keep going, but if you want to call it. What are we at? Uh, 35 minutes. All right. Uh, this is going to be a short one. Sorry about that, it's guys. It's not really that short. If you look on average, our episodes are about like 35 to 50 minutes. So it's actually, this is about average, guys. You get what oh. you pay for, which is nothing. Which, which is nothing. <laughs> you all don't right. pay for anything. Um, yeah. So this has been uh, Cleo I'm Talk. I'm just going to keep derailing the ending right here because I think it's funnier. Um, I don't know. I don't really have anything else to talk about. I just think it's funnier to make you wait. I've been RC. And I've been Matt. Uh, you Go can follow. ahead and uh, follow us on Twitter, at Cleo History. <laughs> yeah, you, you, if, it, and, and us. You, you uh, do it. Oh, shoot. Uh, yeah, it's harder than you think, huh? Email, it's harder uh, than you think. Podcast at gmail.com. Uh, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. If you're watching this on YouTube, if you're watching this on Spotify, um, there are better ways to watch than Spotify. Save yourself. Uh, as a Spotify user, uh, five stars will really help us a- anyway. That's true. It, like, if you're if watching you, this on Podcast Addict, you have good taste. If you are on Apple Podcasts, you can leave a review. You can also like it. We don't actually check the Apple Podcast statistics very often, so um, yeah. we probably won't see your review if you do post one. Um, and yeah. All right. Bye. Bye.